Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper. Today we're talking about the Praxis Special Education Exam, specifically 5543. But the methods and the strategies I'm gonna use in this video can be applied to any special education exam. Let's get started. All right, so you know how I love to work backwards and use our good words, bad words strategy. And if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out. We'll link it up up here. But the good words, bad words, and the backwards strategy really, really work on any special ed exams because the special education exams are very scenario based. So you're gonna see a lot of situational questions where they ask you to pick the best approach for any given situation and it'll become clear here in a second so make sure you keep in mind that backwards strategy and good words bad words that i always like to use when attacking this exam now i'm going to show you how to do that in context but first i want to go over the spec really quick for this particular exam so let's hop on over to my computer here and we're talking about content category two planning in the learning environment and content category three instruction now, again, I always like to work backwards, especially when we have a lot of long answer choices and long narratives and things like that, because it's going to help you to narrow it down before you get into the question. So let's go with answer A. Educated with non-disability peers only for electives. All right, so educated with non-disability peers, meaning students without disabilities, but only for electives. I don't like the word only, and especially being educated only for electives, I'm gonna mark out A, okay? Only tends to be a bad word in an answer choice because what it does is it takes a correct answer choice and turns it into an incorrect answer choice. Just a little testing lingo there for you. B, educated with non-disabled peers to the greatest extent possible. Now I like B because what B is outlining is least restrictive environment, L-R-E. And you're gonna see this as a theme throughout all special education tests and um, classes. So being educated with non-disabled peers is really important. Back in the day, we used to kind of segregate those with disabilities and those with no disabilities. And especially when I was growing up, I mean, this was only in the 80s and the 90s, seems like forever ago, but usually the students with disabilities were always put in a separate room, they ate lunch at a different time, you know, it was just like us and then them, right? And through the years, we've realized that that's really not the right thing to do. You wanna make sure you're putting students in the least restrictive environment, meaning that they are being educated in general ed classrooms. So AP classes, honors classes, culinary classes, PE, all of that to the greatest extent possible. Now, some students need special services. You have some students who don't have the use of their hands or they are blind or they have severe disabilities and they need special services. But it's the goal of the special education teacher and the general ed teacher to figure out a way to bring all students in. It's called inclusion and making sure that you are um, educating students in just the straight up normal environment until they need services. And of course, some students need more services than others, and we have to differentiate based on that. So I really like B. I'm gonna keep B because it's, a, it's talking about LRE, and I can already see the term LRE here in the question stem, but I'm working backwards, so I wanna go to C. Educated in a special school so that there, are, there is no interaction with non-disabled peers. This is some straight up like 1930s stuff where they used to take kids with special needs and put them in a school up on the hill and nobody heard from them again. It was tragic, okay? C is not the correct answer ever. D, educated with the most assistance, whether or not it be in the same environment as with non-disabled peers. Well, the most assistance... Well, that just depends. Some students need a lot of assistance and some students don't. It's not a one size fit, fits all. So I'm going to cross out D. B is looking like the best answer choice here. Let's read the question. The least restrictive environment, LRE, as defined by IDEA, requires students be educated with non-disabled peers to the greatest extent possible. What B is saying is, no matter what your disability is, we're gonna bring you into general ed classrooms and we're gonna do that as much as possible until you need services. 
So let me give you a real life example of this. My husband was the, we call it ESE in Florida, Exceptional Student Education. And he, uh, so he's certified in ESE, but he was also the culinary teacher because he's a chef. And he's an awesome chef too, by the way. And um, he was talking with other culinary teachers in the district and one culinary teacher had told him that when she had disabled students come into her classroom she would just have them go in the corner and like color worksheets which is not least restrictive environment the culinary classroom is such an exciting classroom there are things to chop and things to cook and smush and all these cool things that kids like to do and why should the disabled students not have the opportunity to do that my husband used to let those students handle knives as long as they had control over their hands, as long as they didn't have a disability with like their hands and stuff like that. He'd have them juicing, he'd have them chopping and mixing, and they loved culinary class. And the one thing about culinary is that's applied to the real world where you could get a job as a culinary person, as a cook or as a chef. So he came from, you know, the the philosophy that no, those kids should not be in the corner coloring. That's not culinary. Coloring is not culinary. Chopping and mixing and juicing and learning about food and peeling onions and all these crazy things that kids like to do is part of culinary. And so when the the, uh, life skills kids, and those are the kids with severe disabilities, would come in, he would have them cooking up a storm. And that is what we call least restrictive environment. Back in the day, those students wouldn't even be allowed to go into culinary, but we know now that that is not the best thing. The best thing is to have the least restrictive environment where the students are safe. You know, you don't want to put a student who doesn't have control of his hands next to a Bunsen burner or, you know, um, expecting students with severe disabilities to jump over something in PE, obviously. But there's always ways that we can accommodate and make the learning environment least restrictive for them. So that's what B outlines here. So keep that in mind. It's all over every special education test because the state wants to know that when you become a special ed teacher that you're going to do this for your students that you're not going to sit them in the corner and give them worksheets and ward sorts and coloring okay they want to know that you're giving them an authentic and a um, robust education all right and that's what lre has to do with all right so keep that in mind And finally, the last question here, again, we have this big, long scenario, so that always freaks me out. I'm going to start here in the answer choices. A, assign Trish a peer buddy to help keep her on task. A lot of people like the peer buddy thing here, but peer buddies should not be used to keep students on task. That's the job of the teacher. So be mindful whenever you see a peer buddy question or answer choice, I should say, Proceed with caution. We do use peers to interact with each other in reading and discussions and things like that. But the peer should never be used to like tutor a student or do the job of the teacher. And in this case, it's not the peer buddy's job to keep Trish on task. So I'm gonna cross off A because it's kind of on the bad words list. B, provide Trish with a visual menu of appropriate behaviors. I love this visual menu of appropriate behaviors because we're talking about exceptional student education or special education, visual menu, visual things for students really helps. And then you have appropriate behaviors there, which is another um, set of words that I would consider on the good words list. So I'm going to keep B. Let's read the rest. C, sit Trish next to the window so she can look outside. No. No. Sounds nice and everything, but that's not that's not a strategy for the classroom. C is out. D, give Trish high interests, low reading level assignments and goals. All right. Well, I like high interest, but this right here, low reading level, this is on the bad words list. This is considered lowering the standard. And remember, we do not lower the standards under any circumstances when it comes to students, especially students with disabilities. What we see too often is teachers, some some teachers say, well, they can't really do that. So I just like cut out most of the questions and they're just going to answer like one question. No, that's not what we do. Keep the standard high 
and provide students with accommodations and modifications that will help bring them up to that standard, okay? So we do not lower the standards under any circumstances when it comes to special education students or any students for that matter, okay? And that's why D is out. The first part of D is good. Give Trish high interest. High interest is good, but low reading level, that means you're lowering the standard and we don't like that. So D is out. Looks like already I can grab B without ever reading this question here, all right? Now, let's take a look at the question stem. Again, I'm still working backwards. So which of the following behavior strategies would best help Trish, best, help Trish. Again, we're looking for the most appropriate or the best here, okay? And B is still my favorite answer. And now let's read the question. Trish is a sixth grade student who is diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, ASD. She has difficulty maintaining eye contact and makes impulsive comments during lessons. Which of the following would be the best? Well, with students with autism spectrum disorder, visuals really help them understand social cues. And in this case, that's what we're trying to do here. If we can provide Trish with a visual menu of appropriate behaviors, she can kind of see what she is supposed to do. And this is a common strategy with ASD students, all right? A is not gonna help Trish keep her on task. This is a peer buddy to keep her on task. This peer buddy doesn't know about autism. He or she is not an expert. You are, you're the teacher. You're the one who's supposed to do that. So A is out. Sit Trish next to the window. That's not gonna help her learn. That's, that's a nonsense answer. And D is lowering the standard for Trish and really doesn't have to do much with her behaviors. This is more about reading. So that's out. And that's why B is the most appropriate answer choice here because we've got it attached to the right thing, which is behaviors while she's working in groups or working in on assignments. And then we have that visual menu, which is really, really helpful for students on the spectrum. All right. So I hope that helps you out today when it comes to the special education test. Remember, no matter what special education test you're taking with Praxis, these particular methods are going to help you work back backwards, look for those good words, find them, delete or eliminate the bad word answer choices, and then get into the question and look at the scenario. When you're talking about scenario-based questions, working backwards and the good words, bad words strategy is your key to getting through those test questions. And there are a ton of them on the special education exams. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those in the comments below and I'll be happy to take a look at those. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notifications button so you're notified when we upload new content. And thank you so much for your interest in our content today. Have an awesome day.